all of us are very familiar with uh, Easter celebrations. If we are believers, um, every year we celebrate Easter. And some of us are even aware that there are certain events that lead up to Easter. Um, and we call that the Lent. Um, some of us believers practice Lent, some of us don't. But I think it's very important for us to know and then analyze and see if that is something we ought to be indulging in. This Passion Week, uh, I've been asked to speak on the topic, uh, the 40 days of fasting that Jesus undertook. So as a uh, lead up to that particular topic, I want to begin um, th today by speaking about the season of the Lent. You know, festivals uh, were created as reminders for people and their covenant that uh, they have with God, irrespective of what religion uh, or what uh, belief system that you uh, would find yourself in. Uh, festivals were usually meant to be a reminder uh, about, you know, God and the covenant that the people have with their God. Unfortunately, over time, uh, what people have done is they have abandoned the 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 reminder part of festivals, the, 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 that part of the festival that reminds them of their covenant with God. And then for whatever reasons that might be, <coughs> They have seemed to have abandoned that and they have become nominal in their faith and practice uh, for some reason that uh, their God is really not real to them anymore. Uh, he is more a construct of an ignorant man's imagination and that has been passed on as tradition and it would be disrespectful if that tradition is not maintained. So many people subscribe and participate and celebrate to these festivals on that on that front, they do not want to upset people and they want to maintain the tradition, not so much for the original intent, which is to point or remind them about their covenant with God. And there are some others, uh, you know, uh, for whom uh, they believe that God is really not interested in their life. Um, you know, it really doesn't matter what they do uh, as long as, you know, we don't upset them. And if we don't do this, we might upset them, and so might as well be part of the festival. That seems to be the attitude of some others. And then we have, and then we have others who uh, celebrate festivals more of a cultural event, um, and and uh, the, the the reminder aspect is completely removed off their minds and. And whatever they, they want to do, they do it more as a social event, a cultural event, uh, wherein or, or sometimes it's even part of a family event. Uh, it is time you spend with people in society, in your family. Um, and so this sociological pattern, you know, has kind of begun to invade the church, uh, the body of Christ. And so now you have believers also having the same attitude to certain festivals. Throughout history, the Christian history, people have constantly endeavored to keep reminding them, to keep pointing them to Christ, to keep pointing them to the expectations that Christ has, the commission that Christ has given them. So festivals are, are, uh, are periods, are events, that point us to Christ and the commission that he has put in our hands. Unfortunately, over time, just like how the festivals as a social event has crept into the minds of people, non-Christians, so also we find the same pattern among people inside the church, the believers. Increasingly, there are more nominal Christians than there are genuine believers inside the church. And uh, of particular note, you would find that the second generation of Christians, and by second generation, we mean Christians who are born 
to Christians who came into faith in Christ. The generation that is born to people who first accepted Christ. We call that the second generation Christians. And they are more susceptible to this phenomenon. You know, they are more uh, in tune with festivals as a socio cultural event, as opposed to something that is significant in their covenant with God. So, keeping all these things in mind, today I'm going to talk about one such festival, Easter. I don't know what Easter brings to your mind, um, but Easter is a time when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. We celebrate the victory that Jesus uh, 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 won over uh, death, over the evil one. Um, and um, many, for many of us, um, Sunday, uh, Easter is a one Sunday event. It is it is an event on a particular Sunday. Um, but contrary to this belief, we find that the early Christians, uh, you know, who were who transitioned uh, leadership from the, the apostles who were the disciples of Jesus himself, um, they inherited a very important discipline. Uh, uh, and, and I'm going to talk about that discipline and that discipline was the Lent. Uh, what is this Lent? Um, we're going to see that in a little bit. Um, why did the Christians practice this? What did it entail? Uh, we're going to see that uh, in a little bit. And finally, I'm going to answer this question. Well, this was something that began 2,000 years ago. And when it, be and when it had begun 2,000 years ago, is it still relevant for us 2,000 years later? Is this something we... Uh, need to practice? Is it something that is applicable for us today? Um, and I'm going to look at a very interesting text, uh, a text that does not talk about Lent, but it talks about the intent behind Lent. Um, so uh, turn your Bibles to Psalms 139, 23 and 24 and keep that open. We will revisit that once I'm done talking about what I need to with regard to Lent. Um, the first thing I want to put out there before you, Lent was an annual preparation for the Great Commission. Um, Lent was a season in the lives of believers, the early Christians, that is, the, the apostles who then transitioned this practice to the early Christians. Uh, they celebrated Lent as a very important event that marked their annual preparation for the Great Commission. Now, why do I say this? Well, for us to understand what I'm saying here, we need to first understand what is Lent. Uh, it is a season of fasting for 40 days prior to sunrise on Easter Sunday morning. So 40 days leading up to Easter sunrise would be the period that the apostles set aside and later the early Christians set aside as the period of the Lent. Um, in 2023, Easter falls on Sunday, April 9, and which means Lent would be 40 days prior to sunrise on April 9, and that would be uh, sunset on March 28, or we can take it as March uh, on February 28, or we can take it as on March 1. So beginning from the 1st of March, which is a Wednesday, to Sunday morning sunrise on April 9 would cover the period of the Lent. The word Lent um, was not a word that the people used, the early Christians used 2,000 years ago, uh, Lent actually is an Anglo-Saxon use, usage uh, vocabulary. Um, and, um, and the word that the Anglo-Saxons would use to refer to the Lent was Lenten, which means the spring season, the season, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, the season between winter and summer. So 
between winter and summer would be a temporary uh, adjustment period, which which would be referred to as the spring. Uh, the word in Old English is translated as lengthen and refers to the spring season when the days get longer. Now, if you're a good student of geography, you would understand um, where this comes from. So as the Earth re revolves around the sun, um, it stations itself uh, at particular times of the year, you know, um, uh, in positions that create winter and summer, depending on where you are, um, uh, which hemisphere of the world you may be residing in, the northern hemisphere. If it has winter, then the southern hemisphere would have summer. If the southern hemisphere has winter, then the northern hemisphere would have summer. Now, keeping the Anglo-Saxons purview, who live predominantly in the northern hemisphere, it would be a time when the sun is moving from the winter solstice to the summer solstice, somewhere in between. Uh, what happens is during the winter, the days are shorter. The, the amount of exposure to sunlight is lesser. So the days are shorter, the nights are longer. And as they get closer, as they transition from winter solstice to summer solstice, they hit spring in between. And that's when the days begin to increase in time. It lengthens. And therefore, the word lengthen, uh, from which we get the word length. Um, what was the purpose of the land? OK, this is what the Lent was. It was for a period of 40 days. And, you know, we got the background idea as to why it was called Lent. What is the purpose of the Lent? Traditionally, there are three things that are considered to be the pillars of the Lent season. First, it is a time of communicating with God. Uh, back in the day, when the scripture copies of the scripture were not available, it was time spent in prayer, but it was time spent in prayer where you don't speak much, but in prayer, you listen to God speak to you. Nowadays, in addition to prayer, since we have copies of the scripture available with us, people would do both. They would pray and they would also read scripture to hear from God what he has for them to listen to, what he wants them to do, what he wants them to change, what he wants them to let go of. Uh, it is an intentionally setting aside time to, to be spent more listening to God and seeing if there are things that God wants us to, to be purified from things that God is pointing to us as baggage that we are carrying, things that God is pointing to us and saying, you cannot be a believer and be doing these things. Um, so it is a time when we spend in prayer and in scripture reading where we are not the ones who are talking, but we are the ones who are listening and we are trying to listen to what God has to say to each one of us. Um, it is also uh, it is also a time when people would give in order to display the attitude of service, servitude, uh, by serving the poor, by giving alms to the poor, by making considerable uh, uh, gifts and donations and and whatever. Uh, that you find somebody in need uh, needs to be addressed with. Uh, you identify needs and then you do your little bit in giving towards those needs. Now, this is not charitable giving. Uh, this is not giving, um, uh, you know, to make you feel good. Now, this is celebrating what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus gave his life on the cross for us, for me. And, and, as I, and as I keep reminding myself about what Jesus did on the cross, 
I, I, I want to practice that. I want to honor that. I want to respect that by celebrating giving myself, giving to somebody else a need, just like how Christ gave himself for my need, my salvation. The third thing is it is also a time when we abstain and we we try to to control our urges. Uh, and there were two urges in particular that were that were controlled. One was the urge to eat because of hunger and the other was the urge or sexual drive. Uh, and it was a time when Christians would stay away from these two things. They would try and overcome the urge of uh, 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 to eat on account of hunger, and they will also stay away from sexual activity. Uh, in a way, this was inflicting suffering upon ourselves, and uh, and some traditional Christians would refer to this as penance, which is which is uh, taking some sort of a suffering upon yourself to uh, to. Um, um, to to allow yourself experience to in in a very small degree, uh, in a very small measure, what Jesus went through um, in the days leading up to his crucifixion, death, burial, and eventual resurrection. So these are these are these are the three things that are considered to be the pillars or the main purposes of Lent. Um, you know, by doing these things, we are not trying to prove how holy we are. Uh, rather, it's it's trying to tell my body, tell my flesh that this is what Jesus did. It is, in a way, in a very minimal way, trying to embrace and go through what Jesus went through. No matter how much we try, we won't get to the full extent of what Jesus went through. But this was a discipline to keep reminding our body. The purpose was to remind ourselves. The purpose was not to mimic what Jesus did on the cross. The purpose is to remind ourselves the discomfort, the pain, the suffering that Jesus underwent. And so this was a period that the early Christians uh, set aside for us to remind ourselves of how fortunate we are, how gracious God has been that we did not have to endure the suffering of going to a cross. And even if we did, that would not have been sufficient anyways. Uh, but, but God himself underwent that. And here we are trying to remind ourselves, you know, to some measure or some extent what uh, what Jesus did. Um, it is a time to retrospect our spiritual journey. You know, uh, every time we we travel, uh, you are always wanting to make sure that you are making a forward progress. You 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 take a train from Chennai, uh, so you take a train from Bangalore to Chennai you inevitably will keep looking, oh, which station has come? Have we crossed the station? Because you want to keep measuring your progress. And then you want to say, OK, I have so much more of the journey left. Uh, and then I can plan. Oh, I can take a nap. I can read a book. Uh, maybe I'll play a game, uh, chat with the fellow passenger. I, I, can, I can calculate what I'm going to do with the remainder of the time as I keep track of my progress. The Lent was meant to do something very similar, except it was in terms of our spiritual journey. As we move every year, as we spend and complete every year uh, that God graciously provides for us in this world, inevitably there are going to be a lot of baggage that we're going to be carrying, many of which is unwanted. Uh, but we have all been added to ourselves and have made it burdensome to us. And, uh, you know, we are not keeping in pace uh, 
uh, with with the way Jesus intended for us to keep in pace. And so Lent becomes a very important period when I introspect and retrospect and and look for areas in my life for God to point out. Remember, I said prayer and scripture is to listen to God speak, not you speak, right? So I listen to God and I want him to point out and say, hey, these are areas that you need to change. This is, excuse me, this is an unwanted burden or baggage that you're carrying that's slowing you down. You need to make a change. Um, that could be a change to my career. That could be a change to my life status from being single to being married. Uh, you know, um, for some of us, it is, you know, from being dependent on someone to becoming independent. Uh, for others of us, it might be in terms of um, uh, the way we spend our life. And God might be telling you spending too much time with friends. Or God might be saying you're spending too much, too less time with your kids. You're spending too less time with your spouse, listening to what God is telling us. Very, very important uh, purpose of Lent. So, having kept everything I've said so far in mind, now let's talk about why should we practice Lent. Uh, as I said, it was a discipline that was set by the early Christians to imitate the 40 days of fasting that Jesus undertook before launching into the last three years of his ministry, uh, culminating in his death, burial, and resurrection. So this was not a practice that they just came out of the blue. Uh, they, they wanted, you know, they wanted to imitate what Jesus did. Now, why did they want to do that? Well, they wanted to do that um, because that's what Jesus did before he, the season of ministry. Um, for us, God has called us to participate in the Great Commission. Uh, for us, everything we do is ministry. Uh, for us, uh, being a husband is a ministry. Being a wife is a ministry. Being a mother is a ministry. Being a father is a ministry. Um, uh, being a good employee is a ministry. Being a good boss is a ministry. Everything we do is a ministry. And Jesus himself took time off in to, to prepare himself for ministry. And, and the disciples, the apostles, they thought it fit. When Jesus himself did that, so should we. And uh, they brought about this uh, uh, practice of Lent. Um, after Jesus' ascension into heaven, the church was instituted to be the visible reality of Jesus. We are the body of Christ. Why? Because the body of Christ is not here anymore. It's back. It's back in heaven. It, it, it's, it's at the right hand of God, seated on the throne. That's where Jesus is bodily right now. But. Even though he ascended to that position, he's left behind another body of his, which is you and me, the church. Uh, and just as how Jesus practiced fasting uh, to prepare himself for ministry, so also the body of Christ came up with the practice of length to, pra to, to prepare themselves for the ministry that God has bestowed upon them and entrusted into their hands. The early church, in recognition of this reality, practiced the discipline of Lent to do what Jesus did. Lent is a time of purification and renewal, so as to prepare for a season of the church's ministry ahead. Okay, so the first thing I said, Lent was an annual preparation for the Great Commission. The second thing I want to say is that the Lent is an upgrade or an advancement in God's plan for redemption. OK, the Lent is an upgrade or an advancement in God's plan for redemption. 
why do I say this? Well, why 40 days? Um, why did Jesus choose 40 days? There is a reason why Jesus chose 40 days, and there's a reason why the apostles and the early Christians continued the tradition of 40 days. You know, there, there, are, there are numbers in scripture that, you know, have a significance. These numerical values have significance. For example, the, the number 40. Uh, every time this is used in scripture, it's, it's used to signify God's mighty act in the advancement of his redemptive plan. Uh, we see that throughout the scriptures. And here are some examples. Noah's flood was for 40 days. Uh, Israel went through the wilderness experience for 40 years. Uh, Moses fasted on the mountain for 40 days. The spies in the land of Canaan were sent into the land to spy for 40 days. Uh, Goliath defied the, Israel, the army of Israel for 40 days before Samuel, uh, uh, sorry, before David uh, confronts him and defeats him. The reigns of the first three kings of Israel, Saul, David, and Solomon were all 40 years apiece. Jonah's warning to Nineveh was 40 days. Uh, Jesus, ah, you know, we're going to celebrate Easter, the resurrection of the Lord between the time, between his, the day of his resurrection up and until the day of his ascension, Jesus appeared for 40 days, uh, uh, making himself, revealing himself and making himself available uh, with the glorified body, the resurrected body for 40 days. Um, So I find that 40 has the significance of being uh, an advancement in God's plan, his plan of redemption in particular. And that's why I think Lent is very important as a preparation for our involvement in the Great Commission. Um, it, is, it is so important that we understand that we cannot be ready for ministry. We cannot run like a machine uh, when it comes to ministry. There are, there are going to be a lot of things that we need to deal with. Um, you know, uh, every company has a human resource de a d department that that ensures that the labor uh, force is healthy and labor force is active and labor force is satisfied. And you know that there's an ongoing activity and measures taken to ensure that the labor productivity is, 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 is an, on par with the management's expectations. Uh, something similar here. Uh, if I am not preparing for ministry, my productivity will be bad. If I am not preparing for my ministry as a father to my children, if I'm not preparing as a ministry as a husband to my wife, if I'm not preparing as a as a uh, as a good uh, preacher or teacher to the people to whom I preach and teach, um, it's not going to it's not going to be impactful. It's not going to be productive. And 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 I'm going to get frustrated. And I find at times I get frustrated. Why do I get frustrated? Oh, well, there was something lacking in what I'm doing. And what is that lacking in what I'm doing? That that very thing that I need to upgrade myself and advance myself as I participate in, in God's plan for redemption. Lent was a season that Jesus uh, uh, inaugurated and the disciples caught on and the apostles uh, uh, made it an essential discipline. Uh, I think we need to consider that. What 
really happens when I do Lent, when I practice Lent. Yeah, I, I do fasting. I keep myself away from the urges of life. I, I listen to God. Uh, I, 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 I try to give to poor people. All that is true. But if you have done a good 40 day Lent, the, the best outcome of that will be evident in the remaining 325 days of the year where you are out there ministering in the very capacities God has enabled you and me. If I'm not productive there, if I'm not effective there, there is something wrong between me and God. Lent provides that opportunity for us. As I said at the beginning, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there is any hurtful way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. A Psalm of David. Uh, and this is exactly what we do during Lent. We ask God to cleanse us, purify us, renew us. And say, God, I cannot, I cannot live an unproductive life. I cannot be frustrated with what you have called me to do. I need help. And I know for me to be productive in ministry, I need to be cleansed internally. For me to be for me to be impactful in ministry, I need to be rejuvenated. I need to be uh, unwanted baggage in me to be removed. And so like the psalmist David, Lord, I present myself. Cleanse me for the busy season of ministry ahead. And that's the message I want to leave with you today. Be cleansed for the busy ministry season of ministry ahead. We need it. We need it. You're going to run 325 days based on how these 40 days go. I think that is reasonable. And it doesn't take much. There is nothing you need to do out of the ordinary to accomplish this. Of course, you need to abstain yourselves from certain things, from urges. Fast if your health permits. Spend time with scripture. Now you have the luxury of audio Bibles. Listen to God's word being read out to you. Listen to preachers, teachers. On a more intentional manner. Um, during these 40 days, so it prepares you for the season ahead. It cleans, helps you get cleansed. It helps the Lord speak and point to areas in your life that needs to be cleansed. Um, I think one of the one of the ways we can do this Lent. Is by not trying to hide from God. You know, for those of us who don't practice Lent, what we're trying to do is, you know, we, we're trying to behave like everything is OK. There's nothing wrong. There is no change I need to undergo. I am trying to hide myself. I am not allowing God to speak into my life. I'm trying to run away from that. Um, I need to stop doing that. We need to stop doing that. We need to come to reality here. And, and look at God and say, God, cleanse me. Search me. Test me. Try me. See if there's anything wrong with me. And cleanse me so that I could continue to participate in a more productive manner in the Great Commission. The second thing, God, I want to allow you to test me. You know, when God tests and tries you, most of us, the first response we have is, God, take this away from me. Take this test away from me. I don't want to be tested in this manner. It is so uncomfortable. 
take it away from me. Um, I cannot be cleansed. I cannot become productive with my ministry if I have this attitude of not willing to undergo discomfort, of not willing to be tested and tried by God. What exactly is going to happen when God tests and tries you? He's going to allow Satan to, to devise his evil schemes. And we're going to see that in session two, because he did allow Satan to do that to Jesus when Jesus fasted for 40 days. Jesus, in spite of his divinity, allowed the tests and trial as a preparatory measure for ministry. Uh, how much more should you and I allow God to test and try? Testing and trial can come through complications. They can come through health issues. They can come through uh, relationship issues. They can come through uh, persecution, maybe. They can come in very many different forms. Am I willing to embrace it and allow it? Or am I saying, God, take it away? I don't want it. I don't like it. Uh, a man or a woman that is tested and tried by God is cleansed and purified and renewed for the next 325 days of ministry ahead. And finally, it's one thing to be daring to allow tests and trials. And it's another thing to submit in humility to God and say, God, I allow these things. I asked of these things from you. Now give me the strength to endure it. Give me the strength to overcome it. Give me the strength to be triumphant with it. My prayer should not be, God, I take away this test, but rather my prayer should be, God, give me the strength to pass this test. When I go to an examination hall, I look at the question paper. If it's very difficult, I do not return the question paper and come back home. No matter how difficult the question paper may be, I try to answer it to the best of my ability to the extent I've prepared for it. When tests and trials come, I look up to God and say, God, thank you for allowing or for, for testing and trying me. Now that I've asked you to do it, I request one more thing. Give me the strength for me to endure the test and trial. My dear friends, this is what Lent, the season of Lent is all about. It is preparing myself with the attitude of opening myself and not hiding myself away from God. Lent is a time when I ask God to say, God, prep me up for whatever tests and trials that you are to bring. Lord, give me the strength to endure them. See if there is any offensive, hurtful way in me and take it out of me, Lord. I want to be a person who is the body of Christ. Just as how Jesus underwent the tests and trials. So also I'm willing to do the same. Give me the strength to endure the test and trial. I pray that this would be uh, something that is energizing, something that is rejuvenating, and definitely renewing as we consider what lies ahead in terms of our participation in the Great Commission. May God bless us.